Hello, I'm Pat Olson. Welcome to this edition of Inside USF Basketball. The USF Dons have gone through their non-conference schedule. They'll open up their West Coast Conference campaign Monday in Moraga against the St. Mary's Gales and then the Wednesday home opener against the Pacific Tigers inside one memorial at the Sobrato Center. We'll sit down with USF Associate Head Coach Luke Wicks and look ahead to West Coast Conference play. That's all coming up right now. Well, Coach, uh, West Coast Conference play uh, just around the corner. Uh, what have you learned about uh, your young team here in the, the non-conference schedule? Well, we know going into this year that uh, it would be a learning experience for a lot of our guys, you know, only returning two guys that played significant minutes from, from the team before. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is is that every game, whether we won or lost, we felt like we, we accomplished something. You know, our younger guys, they got a lot of great experience, and that's what we set themselves up for, and that's what the non-conference is, is to t try and help your guys prepare for the WCC season, which is going to be a grueling task in itself. You know, you, you alluded to the, the key guys, those two guards for you, Dirksen and Watson. Let's start with Watson. He's had a, a tremendous run of it so far in the non-conference. Uh, you look at his scoring, he's around 19 a ball game. Uh, he really has come along since his freshman year. And we've asked him to do a lot for our squad, uh, especially here in the non-conference. I think he is sitting uh, about second in the conference in scoring. And uh, what doesn't stick out to a lot of people's eyes, they see the scoring numbers, but he's also sitting at sixth in the conference in assists, right around five and a half or six assists a game. So he does facilitate a lot of our things uh, in our offense, but he's also taking a leadership role in terms of uh, holding guys accountable, being more vocal in practice, being more vocal on the court, um, and, and he's really matured, and it's great to see a guy like that kind of come into his own. The other guy in the backcourt that brings experience is obviously Tim Dirksen, you know, the cliche kind of a, a blue-collar guy. I mean, he's pulling down an awful lot of rebounds from the two-guard slot. He brings that toughness uh, quality to the team. Anytime you have a 6'2", 6'3", kid that's pulling down, uh, getting double-doubles, I think he's had two this year so far. Um, it, it's it's fun to watch that kid play, and, and he's going to do whatever it takes. I, I think one of the games you, in the second half, he was darn near playing on one leg, um, and he's just going to try and will our team to victory and do whatever it takes. He'll take charges. He'll get on loose balls. Like we've mentioned, the rebounding. I think he's one of only two guards that are in the top ten in the conference in rebounding right now, and he's also scoring it and shooting it really effectively too at about 40% from three and um, just doing whatever it takes to win. You know, from the coaching staff perspective, uh, how important is it to, to develop that third guy, another guy that can become a scorer? Early, the first couple of games, it was Boyce. We've seen Uche Ofebu have a couple of big scoring games. Renfro seems to have the, the capability to put the ball in the hole. But you probably want that third guy on a consistent basis so not everybody's watching Dirksen and Watson. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to have as, uh, you know, we're not sitting over there trying to figure out what's going on with who's going to give it one night. If you could bring a, a consistent guy along, it'd be, it'd be great. But um, like you said, some nights it's been Uche, some nights it's been Ronnie Boyce, some nights it's been Chase Foster. Um, and, you know, with a young team that doesn't have a lot of experience, you're going to find that, that there's going to be some ups and downs throughout the course of a season. And it's a marathon, not a sprint. But um, like we said, we're kind of uh, solidifying a, a rotation now as we go into conference play. And we've seen a lot of great things from some of our guys. And hopefully we can build on that as we go into WCC play. What are some areas of improvement to, for the team, some things you'd like to, to work on and maybe get better at as you move towards West Coast Conference play? Well, I think one of the areas that we thought we may struggle in was rebounding just because we are a little undersized and we're actually sitting um, pretty good in that. We're, we're plus five a game in rebounding. I think we've out-rebounded the majority of our opponents um, within the conference itself. I think we're sitting right at fourth. Um, and then offensive rebounding percentage, we're getting about 35% of our offensive rebounds, which is a, is a pretty darn good stat um, in itself. But uh, just – you know, offensively, we need to keep working on finding the open man and the open man being ready on the, on the, on the catch. You know, as you allude to the, the rebounding numbers with this, this young team, especially a young front line, to talk about them kind of as a group. We've seen McCarthy come off the bench and show some, show some good footwork at moments mm -hmm. so he can score a little bit inside. Trey Clemens is giving you some solid minutes. I mentioned Renfro earlier. Uh, Dante Reynolds has, you know, come off the, you know, as a starter and, you know, right out of the shoot, and he's had some, some big rebound and, and scoring games. So those four guys, uh, what do they all bring to the table? 
It's kind of a post player by committee with that, that we're going to rotate those four guys because they are a bit undersized, and we understand that when they're giving up maybe two inches and, and 30, 20 to 30 pounds, it's going to wear on them. So we've got to give a little bit quicker rotations uh, as we sub in and sub out. But, you know, Dante leads that group in rebounding and right around seven a game. And then, um, you know, ne Montre and McCarthy are right about 4.4 and 4.3, and Nate's right there at four to five rebounds a game. And uh, I think one thing that sticks out in my mind of those guys is, you know, Matt McCarthy's averaging two offensive rebounds a game, and, and his offensive rebound per minute production is really good. Um, and they all bring something different. You know, Dante's uh, really long, plays with a high motor, and can defend multiple positions, uh, one through five essentially. And Nate Rinfro is really athletic and, and presents problems. And then you mentioned McCarthy. He's He's skilled enough, and, and shoot, he's gotten a couple games where he's six, seven rebounds. He's got a good nose for the ball. And Montre is just a, a senior that's been through a lot of battles. And um, you saw his, he showcased his athleticism, I think, against Delaware State where he got a couple tip dunks. And um, he can really bring a strong physical presence to our, to our front line. How do you break down the West Coast Conference? Uh, you don't want to concede anything, but I think a lot of folks pencil in Gonzaga as the, the first place team, but it seems like after that, it, it's somewhat wide open. You know, St. Mary's lost all five starters from a year ago. Loyola seems to be an improved team. I know Pepperdine has a lot of their key elements back from last season, and some folks may be circling that team as, as an upper tier team uh, in the league, but how do you kind of see it shaking out? And where does USF fit in the mix with all that? Uh, you know, the, the first things first, uh, there's a lot of great coaches in this league. And, you know, night in and night out, it's going to be a battle. And, and teams know what other teams are going to do. They do a great job of scouting and prepping for each other. Um, you know, and obviously the, the team to beat is, is Gonzaga because they've, they've consistently done it for the last 15, 16 years. So um, it's always a, a great matchup to play them. And you're always striving to uh, not only beat them, but be better than them. Um, and, and that's a great measuring stick that we have in our conference. St. Mary's and BYU have traditionally been two and three in that areas and uh, they both run great programs and have great coaches and uh, you know you, you talk about teams losing guys but um, it, the sign of a great program is when guys do leave the program the next guys kind of fill in where there's a need there there has to be fulfilled um, and St. Mary's is off to a great start and, and they are leading the conference I think right now in, in, in wins and have the best record but um, saying all that we're going to go in there and, and fight till the, till the end, till the, that horn goes, and it's, it's triple zeros on the clock. But, um, you know, I think after those three teams, I would say it's pretty wide open. Um, anyone can beat anyone on any given night, and it's about uh, stealing games on the road and taking care of your home court. How much will a character in close games come into play with that set? Yeah, I think it's, it's, you know, with our young team, the thing we stress the most in this preseason is the fact of learning how to win games. And that's taking charges, and that's getting loose balls, and that's getting big defensive rebounds down the stretch, and that's executing sets and getting the ball to your playmakers in, in crunch time, and, and the playmakers having the confidence to step up and knock shots down. Um, so that it, I think there's going to be a lot of one, two possession games in our future, and, and we're lucky to have the squad we have, and we feel confident going into the season with, the, with these guys. As you get ready for West Coast Conference play with all the young guys, this is going to be their first time going around the league. And I've been in this league a long time, and it's just a little different level. Once you get to West Coast Conference play, the, the teams are familiar with one another. The coaches know each other's coaching styles. The scouting reports probably come a, a little bit easier for you. Mm -hmm. So how do you convey to the young guys what it's like, how different a league game is from a non-conference game, from a passion energy standpoint? Well, I, I think it's great to have a guy like Tim Dirksen on your team that, you know, he's been through it for three years. This is his last go round. He understands what it takes to win on the road. He's been a part of some special teams here and some big wins here at USF. So he can kind of convey that message to those younger guys. They're going to get uh, thrown in the fire right away on Monday night when we take on St. Mary's, and they'll kind of understand it from there. But um, you can talk about it all you want, but once they kind of get that first taste, there's no nothing to be said, and there's, there's no price take on experience. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time. Best of luck as the uh, West Coast Conference uh, schedule is upon us. Thanks, Pat. All right, that's uh, USF Associate Head Coach Luke Wicks. The Dons open up the West Coast Conference schedule on the road Monday night against the Gales in Moraga, 8 p.m. inside McEwen Pavilion. The home opener Wednesday at 5 p.m. against the Pacific Tigers inside War Memorial at the Sobrato Center.